So the volume is 2,000 cubic centimeters because it says it was two liters, so each liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. Okay? Use the volume to express the surface area as a function as radius. So surface area, we want it in terms of radius only. Start with an equation. 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Okay? So I want it just in terms of radius only. So what do I got to get rid of? H. So let's go back up here to the equation that we have not used yet, and we're going to relate R and H. So 2,000 equals the volume of my, of my cylinder, which is pi R squared H. Solve for H. So H equals 2,000 over pi R squared. So then my surface area, just in terms of R only, 2 pi R squared plus 2 pi R. But H in this particular example is 2,000 over pi R squared. So if we simplify that, 2 pi R squared plus 4,000 over R. There's my surface area. And the value of that now is we, had a, we have a a can that we know the volume of, now we can change, we can play with the radius of the can and find out what our surface area that results. You got to understand that now this thing, it's constrained to have a volume of two liters. That's a big can. Oh, it's an oil container. I was going to thought it was like a two liter can of pop. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, so now what we can do is um, is we can go ahead and play with you know, play with B. Okay. Yes, that's probably what I would do to to do with part B. It's, it says it's the the surface is going to be less than twenty four hundred. Um, yeah, because if I compare that to twenty four hundred. It doesn't say graphing calculator, but actually, um, now you got me curious. Yeah, it's I can't see this one factoring real nice, so. Yeah, just because there's a pi in there. Um, so at that point in time, when I see a r to the third and a pi, I'm going to think that won't factor. Then I'm going to go to my technology pretty hard. <coughs> and you can do that a couple different ways. You could graph this, and then you could also graph Let's say you graph this, whatever it ends up to be. I really don't care. Um, and then you could also graph 2400. Y equals 2400. And then that would, from your intersections, that would be a, a range of values for which your surface area is less than 2400. That's what you could do with the, with the tool. That'd be nice. Yeah. Or if you don't like that, you go ahead and simplify this, get it set equal to zero, and then you would just be finding where it's less than zero. Okay, what number again? Solve each inequality. Actually, that one factors by grouping, I think. No, it doesn't factor. But yeah, you're going to have to use the rational root theorem to start throwing things on the shelf. Mm -hmm. I would, of course, take out an A. Um, yeah, you're going to have to. 47. Obviously, just by looking at it, you know, the negative 5 is going to work, but negative 4 thirds is going to work, and 4 is going to work. But, you know, that's just obviously just by looking. Which I mean by looking at the answer, it's obvious yeah. that's what's going to Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just rational. Because first thing, um, I'm tempted to think on that problem, talking about 47, 
I'm tempted to go, Woo, this is my factor by grouping! Because I see the 3 and the 7, and I see something that where they have some numbers in common, but 7 doesn't, it doesn't go in 80. So then I'm like, oh, crap, it was not factored by grouping. So, sending abstract threads and things in the shop. Um, oh, I, you know, I expect you to be able to discuss the tools you use if I, if I ask a specific question, like like in the last one, maybe you know, so, uh, something like uh, discuss what an inverse is, how it's used, something like that. So, so yeah, you know, um, yeah, I, I expect you to be able to to justify things if I ask you to. Mm -hmm. Yep. I will definitely, like a linear asymptote, you bet. Yep. Up top. Exactly, because the remainder is your error, how far you off, how far you are off of your asymptote at any point. How the degrees compare. So it's right. you bet. Yeah, we went over that. We went over it slightly that um that simplify. Okay, so, so if you've got something that cancels top bottom by x plus 1 and x plus 1, go ahead and simplify it, graph your graph, and then whatever your thing that you canceled is really not in your domain. Like x plus 1, I can't have a negative 1 put in, so I would just have a little hole. I wouldn't have an asymptote in that situation. I would just have a hole at that value of x, wherever it might be. Excuse me. Um, I would say it can touch it, but, you know, like in the middle, like say, for example, um, if I have something like this, I might have a horizontal asymptote here and a ver and diagonal asymptote here, and it, it, it could, it could cross it, you know, like we saw something went like this. Oh, it, I'm sorry, is it like going nuclear on me? Okay. So it's more its end behavior. It's at the end it's going to approach it. But like through here, it might cross it. It's not some magical boundary that can never be crossed. It's some magical boundary that at the end, it's helping guide me. Helping show my way towards the end. It's the light at the end. Nothing. You just have to look at me like you said the door. Okay, where are you going? Cool. Is that still a seven year program down there for architecture? Yeah, there's those, those are things to look into. Because architecture and architectural engineering are two different things. Okay. Well.